Today's lecture is uh, without uh, any participants. Since this is an eat day, I thought that I should not bother any of you to come and attend this lecture. I hope uh, this lecture will be of benefit to all the new as well as those uh, candidates who are appearing in the exam. If, they are, if you are not hear, hearing these uh, terminologies for the first time, uh, you can take this lecture as a kind of revision uh, that how should we proceed while describing and explaining uh, the skin the lesion. So uh, the topic of uh, my lecture today is uh, basis of history taking and clinical examination in uh, dermatology. So before I start the lecture, I would like to give a little tribute uh, to my uh, senior, my uh, teacher, my friend, Brigadier Dilawar Abbas Rizvi. Uh, Brigadier Dilawar Abbas Rizvi, most of you know very well, is a dermatologist par excellence and an excellent human being. And um, I learned a lot from him and re regarding the dermatology and the other related things. Then another gentleman is Brigadier Rehanuddin. Brigadier Rehanuddin is my mentor in medical education. And I learned a lot from him uh, regarding uh, the techniques of uh, uh, good teaching. And you all know that he has been an exponent uh, uh, in initiating the preparatory courses for FCPS and MCPS uh, examination. And I'm sure uh, hundreds of uh, dermatologists who have passed the exam uh, in previous years contribute it uh, somehow to these preparatory courses uh, where you where uh, different uh, examiners from different parts of the country comes and uh, give their uh, advices to uh, the parts. So now coming to the actual lecture. A clinical examination in dermatology, um, whether it's in the ward or in the exam, would start from a little history. Um, maybe, maybe it's a um, long case or, um, uh, or um, in short cases, you don't take history, but uh, in long case, you do take a history. And uh, once you see a skin lesion, then you would lie, you must... Uh, ask all the pertinent questions regarding that skin lesion. That, uh, uh, first of all, what type of lesions are those and how the lesion has ever evolved, um, where the lesion have, uh, uh, from where the lesion has started for the first time, and what's the duration of the lesion, how the lesion has progressed, and how the lesion has resolved, and uh, what are the uh, aggravating and what are the relieving factors. Then what are the associated symptoms associated with that uh, lesion? Is there any other um, uh, associated complaints with the lesions like uh, a photosensitivity or uh, any other relation to uh, the food or medications and allergies? Then uh, you must take uh, past history of um, the patient, whether he is having similar or uh, uh, different kind of um, skin lesions in the past as well. So history taking is uh, very important um, for diagnosis of any skin lesion. Then coming to the main topic of today, that is the clinical examination. Uh, clinical examination, uh, the main rule is integrating the pertinent signs and symptoms into a reasonable diagnosis. So uh, the sign symptoms you are going to ask from the patient and signs you are going to elicit yourself. For a dermatologic, dermatological examination, it is, it is important to distinguish between a normal from abnormal and from significant to previous. You see, if you don't know what is a normal variation in a person of spatial gender and of a spatial age, you won't be able to differentiate it from abnormal. For example, the old, in old age, the skin loses elasticity it hangs in folds, and it has altered uh, uh, pigmentation. 
So if such changes are occurring in a young uh, individual, it means it's a premature aging. And you should think of premature aging syndrome. So it is normal at a patient of 80 years, but it is abnormal at the age of 20 years. So similarly, uh, you must uh, be able to differentiate from uh, significant from trivial. Um, trivial uh, can be a few moles on the face. Significant can be 2,000 moles on the whole body. That means uh, there are more chances to develop uh, atypical and um, atypical moles or melanoma in such cases. So this is also important to differentiate uh, significant from trivial. One must be able to pick up uh, the type of cutaneous lesions and understand their shape, arrangement, and distribution. This is the main topic of today's talk. So you will see uh, the with illustrations how should we uh, proceed while um, uh, while uh, making these uh, remarks. So you all know that uh, um, the language of dermatologists is a little different from other specialties. That's why many of the specialties mock us that uh, we have very diff difficult terminology. And uh, it is must that uh, once a trainee has entered into dermatology, he or she must uh, learn and uh, um, understand all these uh, difficult terminologies and have to speak in the dermatological language. As a doctor, we not only need what we see in front of us, but we are also are able to describe it accurately. And to me and to most of the examiners, if you are not describing a lesion correctly, it means that you are not uh, seeing and understanding the lesions correctly. So describing means understanding. Now a few descript uh, descriptive terms which would aid in interpretation of a skin lesion. So lesion, you all use this term very frequently while describing a skin condition. Lesion is generally not a non, non a dermatological term. It's a layman terminology and it can be used for area of a disease that would be small. So a lesion can be a macule, it can be a papule, it can be a pustule. Uh, so lesion is a journal term and I uh, would like that we should uh, not use this word frequently and we should rather um, explain it in more clear terms. Rather than saying this is a red colored lesion, you should say that this is a red uh, papule or a plaque. So um, a lesion is generally a term which should be avoided. Similarly, eruption. Eruption is again a layman term which is used for a skin disease that is most, more widespread. So uh, you can call it as a generalized erythematous scaly um, plaques, or you can say it's an uh, erythroderma with scaling and erythema. But if you say it, it is a generalized eruption with uh, um, uh, erythema and scaling, um, it's not a, a very wrong way um, to describe the lesion and uh, to describe this skin condition. But um, um, uh, it would be preferable that you should describe the lesion rather than using this uh, layman terminology that is eruption. Then there are uh, two terms which I would like to introduce. The first is a primary lesion and second is a secondary lesion. A primary lesion is uh, that lesion which is first to appear in case of a disease and is a result of actual pathology of the disease. That means if you take a biopsy from a primary lesion, the biopsy would be a representative of that uh, disease. Means, for example, if we take a biopsy from a papule in sarcoidosis, that papule would show uh, the, um, uh, the non caseating uh, sarcoidal granulomas. So, this is the primary pathology, and the primary lesion would be carrying that primary pathology. Um, so these uh, secondary lesions uh, are those lesions that develop later on during the disease course and are due to the um, immunological reaction. 
pruritus, or as a result of various pathological processes that the disease induces. Basic feature of a lesion. Uh, basic feature of lesion to be noted during the examination of the lesion. So we would uh, divide these basic feature into five, four different categories. The type of lesion, the shape of lesions, their arrangement and their distribution. And we would take these uh, four headings uh, one by one. So type of the skin lesion. In the type of skin lesions, the first are those lesions that are not palpable. They are either macule or patch. Macule or patch is a flat, non-palpable, circumscribed area of change in skin color. It's important to note that it is just an alteration in skin color. It would be macule if it is less than one centimeter in size, and it would be a patch if it is more than one centimeter. You see this illustration. This is a normal epidermis. There is no change in normal epidermis. It is just the stain which is seen on the skin that would produce a macule or a patch. Uh, here, it is, you, uh, you can see the increased number of melanocytes are shown. So it is a, some form of lentigen uh, which, is, uh, which uh, appears on the skin as a brown color. Similarly, red or blue color. Blue color, these are the, um, uh, blue nevi uh, showing the uh, dermal melanocytes. So this would give a blue color on the skin. And dilated blood vessels would give a red color erythema on the skin. So the macules and patch are just alteration in skin color. You see an example, this is a lentigen, uh, brown color, brown hyperpigmentation. Similarly, vitiligo is again an alteration in skin color, a depigmented patch or just erythema on the face. Now, papule. Papule is a solid uh, cutaneous elevation that is less than one centimeter in diameter. And any raised skin lesion would have three causes. It could be a hyperplasia. That is increase in thickness of epidermis, uh, which is also called as thoraciform hyperplasia. All the conditions which are classified in thoraciform hyperplasia would cause a raised lesion. Then deposits. Deposits would be seen in metabolic disorders, like in mucinosis, like in xanthomatosis, like in calcinosis, like in amyloidosis. So if the cutaneous deposits are seen, then again, it would result in uh, raised skin lesion. Then third cause of a raised skin lesion would be an infiltrate. Infiltrate can be granulomatous or non-granulomatous. So I, in my previous lectures, uh, explained you what are the different kinds of granuloma, infective, non-infective, tubercular, sarcoidal, separative, necrobiotic. And infiltrates can be... Uh, neutrophilic infiltrate disorders having a neutrophilic infiltrate like sweet syndrome like erythema elevatum diatinum disorders having a plasmacytic infiltrate disorders having mast cells infiltrate disorders having histocytes so there are different kind of inflammatory cells which in abundance would result in raised skin lesion so just remember the three causes of a papule plaque or a nodule Papule can be uh, flat topped, like this is a case of lichnothanus. We use 5P, uh, plain top, purplic, pruritic, polygonal papules. So papules can be doom shaped. Now you can appreciate that uh, the surface of uh, these papules, they are convex. And the typical orangish yellow hue of these papules uh, is a clue to the diagnosis of um, eruptive xanthomas. Then papules can be keratotic, means a keratin is seen on the surface of these uh, papules. These are warty lesions, keratotic papules. Then uh, a, re a related term, which is called as a plaque. A plaque is a palpable, plateau-like elevation of the skin, usually more than one centimeter in diameter. So um, 
a raised lesion that is more than one centimeter and has a flat surface. So this is a plaque which is due to hyperplasia, like in psoriasiform hyperplasia, like in chronic lichenification. So because of hyperplasia, this is you see the typical erythematous scaly plaques of psoriasis. Nodule is related to plaque, but has a difference. The, the plaque has a flat upper surface, while a nodule has a curved or doom-shaped upper surface. Like this, these are the nodule. For example, it could be any granulomatous inflammation, like leishmaniasis, like deep mycosis, could be secondary, could be sarcoidosis. So um, these are uh, raised lesions, but they are not plaque, these are nodules, because they have convex surfaces. Like, like these, in, due to infiltrate, due to hyperplasia. Then, a third type of skin lesion, which is the lesion which contains fluid. It can be a vesicle or it can be a bulla. Uh, vesicle or bulla is a circumscribed, elevated, fluid-containing lesion. Uh, the difference between the two is that vesicle is less than 5 millimeters and bulla is more than 5 millimeters. Their size is the main... Uh, uh, the, the size is the main difference between the two. So you can see a subcorneal blister. This is stratum corneum. This blister is sitting on a normal epidermis. And there are two blisters, vesicles here, which are intraepidermal vesicles. Uh, epidermis is uh, above the uh, vesicle and below the vesicle. So these two vesicles are uh, within the epidermis. So this is an example of a vesicle, a small, less than uh, 0.5 centimeter containing fluid and surrounding erythema. Um, I think you should able to appreciate that this is chicken pox. Then there are two blisters or bully on leg of a young uh, patient and there is no surrounding erythema. So this kind of bully can be seen and diabetic but since the patient is young we would not uh, consider it as uh, the first diagnosis, it could be an insect bite, bullous insect bite reaction. Then there is this uh, related kind of skin lesion in which instead of fluid, the um, uh, raised lesion contains pus. So this would be called as pus tube. So now this is the pustule and the cells within the pustules are the neutrophils. Then the fourth type of skin lesion are the wheels. Wheels are transitory, blanchable papules or plaque because of dermal edema. And wheels are typically seen in urticaria. So wheels are just the edema in the dermis, which causes um, uh, erythematous raised uh, transit, uh, transitory lesions and uh, easily blanchable. And after some time, as uh, you give treatment, the edema fluid returns to the blood vessels and this uh, wheel settles. Now, I would like to discuss with you a few uh, uh, secondary type of skin lesions. And among the secondary lesions, which we, we include the crust and the scabs, the eroded and ulcerated areas, the scratch marks, lignification, and scarring. So secondary lesions are those lesions which are, does not represent the major pathology of a disease, but, as, but are the result of uh, um, the different secondary reactions that occur because of the disease, like uh, pruritus, like um, uh, immunological reactions, uh, and because of uh, alteration in blood flow resulting in necrosis and ulceration. Excoriation. You see, these are the excoriated marks. The patient has scratched uh, his or her skin very vigorously with uh, linear multiple scratch marks. And uh, these excoriations are superficial, that is, uh, mainly up till the stratum corneum. And the excoriation marks or scratch marks show that the, uh, that the disease is acute in onset and the scratching is quite aggressive and vigorous. 
so as a disease having excoriation shows that um, it is not a chronic disease so these are the excoriation marks you see the damage in stratum corneum here crust crust is always a secondary lesion it is because of uh, drying of the exudate which is coming out of the lesion the crust can be um, golden yellow crust of uh, impetigo it can be a purulent crust it can be an hemorrhagic crust so if blood is coming out of the lesion then the blood would dry up and would form a hemorrhagic crust and if pus is coming out of the lesion the pus would dry up and form a purulent crust so crust can be of different type and remember the crusting is because of oozing from a lesion and oozing always occur in an acute lesion so if you see a crust over the lesion you would uh, um, you would um, uh, always consider it as an acute lesion that is not at least more than 10 days old now erosions erosions are loss of all or part of the epidermis uh, that means in erosions there is not a complete loss of epidermis and a few layers of epidermis are still intact that's why the erosions heal with alteration in pigment rather than uh, forming of a scar so they can be post inflammatory hyper or hyperpigmentation uh, if you would ask me what is the diagnosis so this is pemphigus vulgaris this is an erosion you can see a few superficial layers of epidermis are lost here it's a cavitating kind of lesion but epidermis is overall intact so once it heals uh, the epidermis would cover it up and it would be a completely a normal uh, skin with normal skin markings and only we would expect some alteration in skin color now ulcer ulcers result from complete loss of epidermis and uh, the the lesion is uh, uh, deep to the derm so you you see in this illustration that there is a complete loss of epidermis and ulcer is going deep into the dermis now once this will heal most of the ulcer will be occupied by the collagen which would be coming from the dermis and there will be a very thin layer of epidermis which, which would be covering that ulcer and there will be loss of skin markings and hair follicles because everything is damaged here in an ulcer because the scar tissue which would form later on would be lacking in uh, the skin markings as well as in hair follicles this is a kind of neuropathic ulcer the differentiating feature of a neuropathic ulcer is number 1 it occurs at the pressure area and number 2 since the patient is uh, not having any sensations in the feet there will be a thick callus formation surrounding the ulcer so number 1 the ulcer is on a pressure area number 2 there is a thick callus surrounding the ulcer so it's a neuropathic ulcer this is a very interesting finding uh, which we see in chronic pruritus that is called as lichenification or in other words it is chronic thickening of the skin or accentuation of skin markings these are the normal skin markings but here in the picture these skin markings they are uh, much more ex 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 exaggerated and uh, this is this uh, phenomena is called as lichenification and the lichenification is because of uh, uh, continuous scratching or rubbing it is not an acute phenomena it's a chronic phenomena the patient must be having such kind of lesions since few weeks or months so lichenification shows chronicity and this is another phenomena here these are the prurigo like lesions uh, prurigo is by itself due to chronic pruritus and it can also be called as pebbly lichenification pebble like lichenification the now you can see here it's a scar tissue which is formed after an ulcer it's a replacement of normal epidermis by um, connect by a collagen tissue and the scar would be 
lacking in the skin markings and hair follicles. You see, shinies have a shiny skin surface. This is a scale. Uh, scale is not a secondary lesion. It is very much a primary skin lesion uh, because scaling uh, shows the pathology of the disease. I've just included here scaling because uh, uh, we are discussing different epidermal phenomena. So first of all, um, scaling is uh, a primary pathology, not a secondary pathology. And number two, inclusion here is because we are discussing different epidermal phenomena uh, in case of uh, skin leak. So scaling means there is um, increase in parakeratotic column in the stratum corneum. This is a, there are different kinds of scales. Uh, some diseases have thick scales, some diseases have um, uh, perforaceous scales, some have cigarette paper scales, some have tin tack scales, some conditions would cause um, uh, fish like uh, scaling. So, scaling can be of different type, but whenever there is a scaling, it means that there is parakeratosis in stratum corneum. These are thick parakeratosis are retaining of nuclei in stratum corneum. Now, then another term, which is hyperkeratosis. Hyperkeratosis is because of thickening of the stratum cornea. You see, this is a hyperkeratotic skin condition. It can be a keratoderma. So, in hyperkeratosis, there is no scaling. And uh, um, there, there is no scaling and there is no parakeratosis. Rather than, there is hyperkeratosis. The stratum corneum is thickened. It's a thick and compact stratum corneum. Now, uh, we have covered uh, uh, till now the type of skin lesions and we are still left with uh, the different shapes, arrangement and distribution. So now we will discuss what are the different shapes of skin lesions. Among the shapes, the lesions can be discoid in shape, it can be annular, it can be polycyclic, it can be reticulate, targetoid, linear, sporotricoid, digitate, serpiginous. Discoid. Discoid means the lesions are disc shaped. These are the plaques. The type of lesion is a plaque, but the but the um, shape is discoid shape, like coin or discoid shape in a form of a coin, go so round. Then these are annular lesions. Annular lesions are those which have, are ring uh, distributed in a ring form, and there is central clearing and there is a peripheral arrangement of the uh, disease occur in tinea corporis, granuloma annular, and there can be other annular lesions as well. Polycyclic means multiple annular lesions. There are multiple annular lesions in petriasis rosea, and there are other conditions in which there are polycyclic lesions like um, subacute ELI or erythema uh, um, annular, uh, gyratum rapens, and uh, other as well. Then these are, this, um, this um, shape, this shape of skin region is a reticulate shape. Reticulate means net work uh, in a form of a network. You know that the supply of uh, blood flow in skin is in a form of a cone. There is a draining uh, uh, blood vessel um, in the center of a cone, and that would uh, um, supply blood to its uh, through its tributaries to a circular area. Uh, for example, this is an um, uh, area supplied by a blood flow, blood vessel. And similarly, this is another area. These are the, this is another area. So the intervening area, the area in between the two or three um, areas of distribution of a single blood uh, uh, vessel is called as watershed area. Uh, here, the uh, blood flow from uh, the adjoining areas uh, come and in case the blood vessels are obstructed due to various causes and there is some uh, reduction in blood flow, the so blood, blood uh, flow would be all right in areas immediately uh, close to the vicinity of the blood vessels, but at the watershed areas, 
the blood flow would not reach properly. So that would result in formation of necrotic areas in a reticulate distribution. See, these are telling dietetic and reticulate distribution where you can see this kind of vision in uh, vasculitis of medium uh, sized blood vessels. This is a sporotrichoid pattern. That is uh, nodules which are uh, developing uh, along the lymphatics. The sporotrichoid pattern is seen in sporotrichosis. It is seen in atypical mycobacterial infection and it can be seen in certain uh, tuber tuberclo uh, in certain uh, tubercletes. Then this is linear. The uh, distribution of lesion is in the form of a line. Uh, the Cogner phenomena also comes in the linear distribution. The, uh, the, the picture shown is that of a lichen planus, and, the, and it is demonstrating that uh, Cogner phenomena, that lesions are developing along the line of scratching. Targetoid lesion. Targetoid lesion is, a, is a, of a shape of a target which we make uh, while uh, shooting. So uh, this is um, two different colors, a central uh, surrounding area with the uh, peripheral areas. So it is in a form of a target and it is seen commonly in Kirkima multiforme. Serpiginous means snake-like. The lesions have a uh, snake-like morphology. The serpiginous lesion is typically seen in larva migraine. Uh, which is because of uh, hookworm of uh, dog or cat origin, which enters the uh, skin through the foot. But since it is uh, not uh, the normal human hookworm, it will fails to enter the lymphatics and it roams around in the epidermis and result in such kind of serpiginous uh, skin lesion. Digitate. Digitate dermatosis. Lesions in which the distribution of lesion is in the form of, uh, um, uh, of finger-like projection. See, this is phytophotodermatitis. And there could be a skin lesion which does not fit into any shape. And uh, asymmetrical, irregular shape, if you exclude everything, then we would uh, consider diagnosis of dermatitis artifacta here. So now we have covered the type of skin lesions, which were the macules and papules and uh, um, uh, plaques and pustules and wheels and secondary lesions and primary lesions, and then the shapes, which included the discoid shape, which included the annular, the polycyclic, the linear, the sporotrichoid, uh, different patterns. Now we are coming to arrangements and the distribution. Arrangement. How the lesions are arranged. They can be grouped. They can be they can be herpetiform, agmenate, satellite, confluent, scattered, paired, symmetrical, asymmetrical. These are the different words which are used uh, while describing the arrangement of the skin lesions. You see, these are the grouped lesions. These kind of grouped vesicles we see in uh, herpes. These are herpetiform lesions. Uh, this is a common misconception that by herpetiform, we take it as a grouped lesion and we ca call this as herpetiform. This is actually grouped um, uh, distribution, grouped arrangement. And herpetiform is arrangement of lesions in a form, a arrangement of vesicles in a annular distribution, annular form. So this is herpetiform. That is, uh, that is vesicles in an annular fashion. Get the, you see an example, herpes gestationis. It's a form of bullous pemphigoid in which the lesions are seen in annular configuration. The, the, herpe, the word herpetiform here is used because of a special configuration that is annular configuration of vesicles in, um, in this disease. Agmenate means 
um, the presence of lesions in uh, in a particular area. Yeah, you can say it as uh, a jamgata, bana hua lesions. Yeah, ek jagah pe there is a, a focus area where the lesions are uh, concentrated. They are not growth. They are not annular, but they are concentrated in a particular area. For example, here they are. You see the lesions in a, a periorbital disc. So they are agmenate, and the disease is agmenate. Uh, acne agmenata. Then satellite lesions are those lesions uh, who are in type are similar to the main lesions, but they are occurring um, uh, in, in the periphery of uh, the main lesions discreetly. So these are the satellite lesions. This is the main lesion. Satellite lesion is a typical feature of candidiasis. So in candidiasis, you see the main disease and then the satellite lesion. Confirm, a little vague picture, but uh, if you see it closely, you can see that these are the individual papules and at places, the papules are confirm, that is they are joining with each other to form a plaque, an annular plaque. So these are its individual papules and this is a confluent papule forming a plaque. Um, then uh, the phenomena of sparing in photodermatitis, we see this phenomena that is those areas which are covered by clothes, they will be spared. You can see in this picture, the patient was working under the sun by uh, wearing a vest and uh, all the skin that was beneath the vest was spared and rest of the skin developed severe photodermatitis. Symmetrical. Symmetrical means the lesions are symmetrically and equally distributed on uh, uh, both hands, uh, forearms, uh, legs and uh, feet. Usually the symmetrical lesions are seen in lesions uh, having uh, um, inflammatory origin like psoriasis, like eczema. But if the lesion has uh, an infective origin, it would be asymmetrical. Or here, this is like in striatus, or this is verrucous epidermal lesions, seen in blaschcoline. These are asymmetrical. Now we have discussed the types of skin lesions, that is papule, pustule, plaques. Then we uh, discussed the shapes, discoid shape, the annular, the polycyclic. Um, then we described the arrangement, that is grouped. Uh, herpetiform or um, um, uh, group lesions and herpetiform lesions and other different arrangements. And then now the last thing which is uh, which we are going to cover is the distribution of the lesion. That is the sites, typical sites where the lesions are. For example, the lesions can be typically on the extensors. It can be typical on the flexures. It can be typical on the facial area, face, then palms and soles. Skins, genital, segmental or dermatomal, or sun exposed. Here, there are thick uh, scaly plaques on extensors. And you know, by this uh, uh, definition and by the addition of the word extensor, we would jump to the diagnosis of psoriasis because psoriasis typically is on the extensor surface. Now, similarly, another condition in which you see eroded papules and vesicles on extensors. And you know, Dermatitis herpetiformis is one such condition in which the distribution of such kind of lesions are on the extensor surface. Then segmental, that is the lesion along the nerve segment. And this is commonly seen dermatosis herpes zoster. Then um, lesions typically involving palm and sole. Scabies is one such condition in which you see burrows along the palm and sole, especially in interdigital areas. Then, uh, such kind of uh, uh, bilaterally symmetrical erythematous uh, nodules and plaques on the shins. If it is on one shin and a solitary plaque, we would consider it as cellulitis. But bilaterally, then the diagnosis would be erythema nodosum. Then this is a, a rolled kind of ulcer with rolled margin and the typical intraorbital distribution 
helps in making the diagnosis that it is a pigmented PCC. Then, um, now after explaining all the different types of the uh, skin lesions, their shapes, their arrangement and distribution, you should now be able to describe the lesion as completely and as completely as possible and keeping in view of all the four types, uh, four uh, categories, that is type, the shape, the arrangement and distribution. And also identify which lesions are primary and which are secondary. And no skin examination is complete if you don't feel that lesion. Now, a uh, few descriptions which I have uh, included here to make you, uh, um, make you more uh, comfortable with these terminologies. Now you have, you are asked to explain this kind of um, skin finding. So here, the type of lesions are scaly plaques. Then uh, they, the color is erythematous. The, the plaques, they are um, scattered. They are not grouped. They are not uh, in any other kind of arrangement. And the distribution is on the extensor. So we can say the, the, the patient is having scaly plaques and scaly and erythematous plaques which are scattered on the extensor surfaces. Now here, you see, this is, um, um, these are the erythematous plaques which are non-scaly now, there is no scaling. They are confluent, the, they are not discrete, they are uh, confluent with each other and are seen in the flexure. So we can say uh, the erythematous non-scaly confluent plaques on the flexural surfaces. This is uh, a generalized distribution of the rash, which is erythematous, which is scaly, confluent, widespread, and involving the subotic area. Here, you see the flaccid blisters over an erythematous background. We can say the flaccid bully surrounding erythema, these are discrete and seen on the abdomen. Again, these are the tense blisters, which are in annular or herpetiform distribution and seen on the flexural surface, surfaces uh, on thighs of a young girl. Here, there are erythematous papules, which are grouped on the scrotum. So we are integrating these four different uh, categories into making a, a description of uh, a skin lesion. Always remember that no dermatological examination is complete unless you examine these five hidden areas. We, are, we call it the hidden areas because you have to go to these areas to pick up the different signs of that disease. That is, these areas are oral mucosa, nails, hairs, genitals, and lymph nodes. And nerves are sometimes included if you suspect a case of leprosy. Otherwise, nerves are excluded. So whatever is the command, whatever is the skin condition, don't forget examining these four areas. Put a torch in the oral mucosa and see it in detail. Uh, look the nails under magnification. Then have a look on the hairs and then genitals. Sometimes in examination, there are two pathologies. Patient may be having a blistering disorder and having scabies as well. So never miss having the examination of these areas. Um, these are the nail pits and this, these nail pits have a significant implication in diagnosis of a skin lesion. These, this is an oral mucosa. You see this white lacy pattern which we see in lichen planets. This is gingival hyperplasia. By looking at the gingival hyperplasia, you immediately come to the conclusion that it is some drug-related disorder like cyclosporin or panitone. Then examine the scalp, and you see the thick erythematous scaly plaques on the scalp, which is coarse psoriasis. Genitals, you examine the genitals and find these typical burrows and nodules, scabies. After completing the skin examination, in a long case or in a short case, 
and after making uh, some diagnosis in your mind you would proceed to the systemic examination and this time if it's a short case you are because you have limited time you would go to the relevant examination and what would be the relevant examination this depends upon your experience and your basic core knowledge but i would advise you to prepare uh, at least 30 to 40 short cases um of the common conditions which would come in your exam that if a case of uh, pseudoxanthoma elasticum would come how would i proceed if a case of neurofibromatosis uh, comes in the exam how would i proceed for the systemic examination so uh, this examination would include um uh, the relevant examination whether it's a cvs or it's an abdomen or uh, it's a um, uh, lung examination or a cns exam and in and in a long case in a long case uh, once you come you are done with the skin examination and relevant systemic examination you would quickly go to the other systems as well which is called as a review of system uh, this is not required in short case these are the few diagnostic tests uh, in which uh, this dioscopy is the one which you which we Uh, expect you to perform during the examination but still you should know uh, about these other tests as well so now i have come to the conclusion of uh, uh, this talk i hope that this talk uh, uh, would uh, be beneficial to you and if you have any questions regarding this talk you can inbox me or ask in the forum thank you all for a very patient listening